Hey guys, welcome back to the Indie Wrestling Corner with another episode of Under the Ropes. I'm your host as always, the queen of the indies, and we're going to get a little saucy today. <laughs> We're getting saucy, baby. We're you get, know how it is. <laughs> we're getting saucy. And you got to say it with that, like, Queens, New York accent. And everything. You have so, to. You have to. With it's, the, it's the A-W sauce. <laughs> It's a little saucy. So <laughs> welcome, my friend Steve Coleman. What, what's going what's on? Up, everybody? How are you? I'm good. I'm excited that you're here. I'm great. I'm so excited. I love to be here. This is great. Uh, Let's do it. I'm so glad. Like we've been into talks for a couple of weeks now, which is so great. So so excited to have you here. So I see all you guys in the chat. I'll get to you guys soon. So make sure you uh, up, share share the stream. We'll get some people in here. Um, if you guys are new to the Under the Rope series here, I interview everything independent wrestling, wrestlers, promoters, referees, behind the scenes, sauce men, uh, awesome. anything in the independent circuit. I got you covered. Uh, again, if you have questions for Steve, I'm sure he'll be more than happy to answer any of those questions for you. At least 90%. I got to screen the other 10. You're not going to get everything from me today. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, um, you know, I always like to start my interviews out the same. You know, people know you. People don't know you. So we're, we're going we're gonna to go back to basics. That's what we like to do. So before we get into the whole thing about sauce and all that fun stuff, I like to talk about, you know, like how everybody got into professional wrestling. Like, you know, when did you start watching? Who are some of your favorites? Give us, give us a little backstory. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I... <clears throat> I pretty much started watching wrestling from the time I was a kid. Um, I remember probably when I was in preschool, it's just like 91, 92, going to see uh, The Undertaker versus Bret Hart was the main event at the old Philadelphia Spectrum. Yeah. And I remember going into school the next day with my little foam urn and telling all the kids how, like, I saw a zombie last night and all this other stuff. So it was something that I always loved from the time I was a kid. I remember going and renting the VHS tapes, watching Hulk Hogan rock and wrestling. So my entire life, I've been into wrestling, really. Yeah. Oh, man. It's so it's so crazy. Uh, let me give a little love in this chat. I see I see David Russell in there. He goes, hi, Tim. Hey. Your guest, Saucy Steve. Uh, I like to call him Jimmy. It's funny. All my Jameses that I know, they all like to be known <laughs> as Jimmy. So you'll be Jimmy. You see Jimmy all the time at the shows. He goes, of all the crazy ideas for merch in the indies, what made you gravitate towards Sauce? So basically, it, it didn't start with, I want this to be for independent wrestling. That just kind of came later. The, the original idea was with horror movies. Because my, my partner in the Sauce game, his name's Tapes from the Crypt, he makes horror long sleeve t-shirts. So we were trying to think of something that we could do to expand his merch line. And that's where the sauce came from. So after we started doing a couple drops of the horror movies, that's when I said, you know, I kind of want to reach out to my friends in the independent scene, maybe use some of my connections that I know. And why not? Let's let's expand their merch and see if we can do sauce for them. Ooh, crazy, crazy. Uh, Chad's in the chat. He goes, hello, Tiffany and Steve. How are you guys doing this evening? I'm good. I'm a little saucy. <laughs> <laughs> good cop backup says hashtag good cop is ready for some mascot and wrestling talk oh we'll get to your questions a little bit later so great great stuff so uh that's so nuts so you know you talk about like wwe stuff like that when did you become aware of the independent circuit i would say it was when i was in middle school so maybe like 2004 2003 um, there was a local show at the, the skating rink near me at uh, the Marple Sports Arena. That was the first time that I had gone to a show that wasn't WWE, anything like that. Um, and then my first show where I actually knew, like, hey, this is independent wrestling was actually for ECWA down in Delaware. And that was around the same time period. And that's when I finally discovered that there was way more than just WWE, WCW out there. And that, you know, maybe somebody like me could even do this. Yeah, 
it, it's so nuts the independent circuit and i love asking people like when did they dive in because you'll hear some wrestlers they'll say that they didn't know it existed you know that they're not really like wrestling fans or you know that they only watch wwe they didn't know the independent circuit existed you know including me and I always talk yeah. about that. Like, I think I discovered the independent circuit about like eight, nine years ago. I didn't know it existed. Um, and I think I find it more fun than the mainstream stuff, you know? So I completely agree with you. I mean, I remember when I would be in middle school reading like the old PWIs and stuff like that. I would see in the back where they had your top 10 rankings. And I would see all these names I had never heard of before. You know, like Chris Hero, mm -hmm. Mike Quackenbush, CM Punk. Yeah. And I was like, who the hell are these guys? <laughs> like, they they get all of these reviews of how great their matches are, but where can I find them? Right. And that's what brought me to looking into, like, CZW, looking into the old ROH and stuff like that, and really expanding my mind for independent wrestling. Oh, it's so nuts. And it's like, the other thing, too, is, like, I always talk about, the in the, you know, the um environment right that it's so different than the mainstream that you can get all in and i feel like and i see this with a lot of tweets and a lot of people that go to independent shows like they're like oh we're just out here we're having more fun at these shows than spending sometimes like three times the amount of what you would spend on an independent show and you'll have a hell of a lot more fun at these shows and then to sit and watch these, your, your favorites like move on to the mainstream too which is right nice. and that's that's so cool to me because like I remember seeing CM Punk work a dark match for WWE back in like 2002. Mm -hmm. Like these dudes who nobody knew who they were at the time. It felt like a secret club that I was in because I was able to watch these dudes. And then you go to the shows how it is now. You see like everybody becomes friends with each other. It's like a family. Yeah. Not only the fans, but the wrestlers, the backstage people. Everybody knows everybody. Yep. And I love that about it. Uh, it's it's so and and you hit it on the nail. Like you're like everybody's family. Um, you know, and we'll get into H2O in a little bit or whatever. But you know, like including myself, that it's like people like you're part of the family. You're part of the family, which is nuts. You know, because it's like I'm just a fan who podcasts and wants to be an advocate for independent wrestling. Um, and that's pretty much what I do. And like for some of these people to even consider me family, it's like. It's nuts. It's cool. Yeah. It's it, really cool. It's 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 a great, great experience. Um, wow. I see a lot of your guys' questions in there. So um, let me let me grab some of these. So Chad wants to, Chad says, Steve, where do you see AEW star Big Swole going since she is leaving AEW? And could you see her going back to WoW Wrestling to face Tessa Blanchard? Tessa is such a tough topic for me. Yeah. Um. I really wish that Big Swole would not do that if she does it. I think it's great, though. I read her statement about AEW mm -hmm. and how she is moving on and all that stuff, and I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome that people are starting to see the value in going back to the independents. Yeah. I think the less that we have people locked down with these contracts is, is awesome. Yeah. The more that you can make your own brand and you can travel around and establish yourself, I think it's great. So yeah. if she goes to WoW and she does the things with Tessa Blanchard, I mean, good for her if that's yeah. what she wants to do. Uh, me personally, I'm not in that Tessa Blanchard camp, but you know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I feel I feel you on that. I feel like it's a very sensitive subject with, um, you know, a lot of people or whatever. But you yeah. hit it also that it's so nice, too, is, I mean, we could sit here. We could talk about Alex Zane. I know you and me had talked about this a little bit. Uh, you know, here's Alex Zane, you know, big fan of him. He's been on this podcast a bunch of times. Uh, you know, I've seen him. I was so happy to see him back at GCW. You know, and he just got, like, I feel like he got better, obviously. Um, and I can't wait to have that conversation with him on this podcast again and talk about like training that he's had and all the great knowledge uh that he has to like give off to um you know upcoming students in the independent scene yes. if you want to say uh which is which is great but the indies like why not it's not even a bad thing if these wrestlers go back to the indies the indies are so hot it's, it's the best place to be really i'm having way more fun the last probably like two three years as a fan or as a person inside the business than I've ever had. Yeah. This is an amazing time to be a fan of wrestling. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, good Cop by Cop says, hashtag bonus cop question. 
Okay, so we're, we're going to go with this one, though. Later, we'll go to his other question that he tweeted out. He goes, with Steve Colvin being an anagram of cleanest move, what is the cleanest smoothing move you have ever you seen executed in wrestling? Ooh. 100% Ninja Mac. Ninja Mac is the cleanest right now. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you want to say as, as the time, like which match which move, anything that he does. I think the one that really comes to mind for me right now would be from the Chicago, I believe it was Chicago, mm -hmm. where he was on top of the ladder and just did some fucking crazy shit. I love Ninja Mac. Oh, he's so great. So, so great. So oh, great. man. So, so nuts. So, um, so this weekend, you know, I got to see you. I got to hang out and bullshit with you a little bit. So I didn't know this. So this is great. So now we can stretch into this conversation. You can pull me deeper into it. You know, you told me that you were a wrestler, too. I didn't know that. So how did you start? Where do we That's... go to watch? What's the go to match that we should watch? <laughs> so I started I started back in 2006. I was 16 when I started my training. Um, I trained at the ACPW wrestling school in Philadelphia. Um, Onslaught and Gemini were my first trainers, and I love them to death because they brought me into this. Mm -hmm. Um I've, I've wrestled for ACPW, I've wrestled for Rampage Pro Wrestling, I've wrestled for Outbreak Wrestling, that's probably my main federation now. Uh, Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, that was my whole area. Wow. Um, I started as a manager just because I was 16, mm -hmm. so I did that for about two years until I was able to actually get into it, and then I've been doing it ever since then. Um, I took a little bit of a break just because I got so burned out from it, but then I came back in 2015 and I've been rolling ever since until the pandemic hit and that's when I started doing sauce. Wow. Um, I say that probably my favorite match would be when I won my first title, which was the Rampage Pro Wrestling Tag Team Championship. Um, we did the whole gimmick with the, you know, the money in the bank and the contract and stuff like that. And I had been playing it along for probably like six, seven months. And then I finally turned on my tag partner in a lethal lottery and took the title from him. So I was the only tag team champion by myself because I'm Rich Steve and I don't need anybody as a partner. I just need me. Ooh. So that was uh, probably my favorite match just because of the way that the crowd reacted. Oh, I like that. Oh, interesting. We got to we gotta look this up. That's why I always like to ask, you know wrestlers like in their opinion what's that go-to match you know that we could go like look you up and you know fall in love with the process no, of wrestling you know a, a lot of people a lot of people talk about the the riot city rules match that i did um with sickened from riot city uh matt wilde from riot city and my old tag team uh project mayhem where it was you know one of those big six man ladders and legos and tables and all that shit and people really liked that because it was so crazy because we had this spot where somebody went from the inside of the ring through four tables or somebody got slammed into the Legos, which does hurt, by the way. But I think for me, what, what really brings me as my favorite is just that reaction from when I turned on my partner, yeah. because I can still remember Chance Young, the super fan in the front row, crying as I got the pin. Oh man. <laughs> That's gotta be like fun to like be on that side and like watch like someone like me who would probably be all over that, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I actually, what I did after that, cause there was a really, really good picture that somebody had gotten from, from ringside. I took the picture of his face and I got it blown up into one of those giant heads <laughs> and I came out with it the next show. And just like walked around with Chance's face in front of my face. Oh my god, that is so funny! <laughs> I can't. I'm dead. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so is this like a plan? Like, are you gonna come back, or is like the sauce the priority now? Are you gonna do both? I want to do both. Um, my number one priority, obviously, right now, is the sauce because I'm just having so much fun with it. Yeah. And I really, really love it. Mm -hmm. I love getting to be creative like that. I love that I don't have to take bumps anymore. My knees feel a lot better. So that's something that like I'm mainly focused on, but there's still a part of me that wants to do it. Like yeah. I even tweeted out the other night, like I really just want to take a bump right now. Mm -hmm. Like I haven't had a match since either July or August and it's eating at me. Like I want to do it again. 
Oh man. So, you know, we're gonna we're gonna throw this out there because you never know what happens on this channel or whatever like that. So I mean you watch a lot of wrestling, you go to a lot of promotions, you're selling the sauce, you know, like <laughs> you're there as a fan. Okay. You have your eye out, right? Just like me. Yep. Like I catch my eyes on certain people. This is why I do this podcast. People catch me. I bring them on the podcast. So with that being said, who has caught your eye? In the independent circuit right now, that's like, all right, I want to get in the ring with and have those bumps with. Um, okay, so there's a few. Number one for me, obviously, is going to be Effie. I would love to do a match with Effie. I think that we would have so much fun doing it. Um, now, as far as people who have really caught my eye, um, I'm going to go number one would probably be Marcus Mathers. Mm -hmm. um, Marcus, he and I, I've known uh, Mark Angel since I was 16. I trained with Mark, like back at back back in the day. I've known Mark my entire life, so to see his kid now blowing it up, like he really blows me away. Um, Ali Catch, she she blows me away. Um, Alex Zane obviously blows me away, and Atticus Coger, I think, is probably the hottest on the indies right now. Who I think should be at a bigger uh, bigger platform soon. Oh, I hundred percent agree with you on that. I feel like now, I don't know why. I think, I mean, he's already had a great 2021, and we haven't, and, um, we haven't even finished the year yet, you know. But I feel yeah. like 2022 is gonna be his year, and I feel like even like earlier this summer, he started to have like really. Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I I love Atticus, and he's got some amazing matches. But I think the last couple of months is like more of the growth of noticing him and Alex Cologne at Atlantic City at you know the showboat like that was it, amazing it was probably one of my favorite matches with yeah i Atticus. mean going through the glass that they put on the on the ring for the the boards that was insane yeah it's not um i loved i loved the match with him and lucky honest honestly like mm -hmm. i thought that oh that yeah. was the match of the night the heat that he got when he pulled down that danny havoc banner mm -hmm. that is unreal yeah I love it when they you, they actually go in and get the heat correctly. You know, like yes. you're still being respectful, yes. but know how to pull the the heat. And if anybody that has not watched last November on IWTV, go back and go watch it because this is probably one of right the now. best storytelling within the last year, right? Like the last year, and Matt Tremont talked about it. Uh, you know, such a great story, and that's how it ended with him and RSP hugging each other, telling the story within the year. Uh, so it's just it's just amazing those last two matches. Uh, you know, I'm not again, I'm not taking anything away from the H2O roster because I fucking love the H2O roster. Um, but you're right, Lucky and Atticus, the story, Lucky being Danny Havocs, one of his best friends. You know, same thing. Matt came back out of retirement. I'm bringing home the gold. It's nuts. Right. It was so it's great. And that's that's what you need. You need those long term plans. If you can pull off a story like that, that says something about not just you as a booker, yeah. but every single person on your roster. Yeah. If you're able to do that for that long, that's that's incredible. I have to take my hat off to them for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're going to go there. We're going to talk H2O. You know, H2O has been my home. Uh, you know, I love everybody there. You guys really, you know, opened up for me. You know, you guys let me do the backstage stuff. The kids are great. Everybody. It's it's the place to be. And it's finally like, well, not finally, but it's just like now I think the last year has brought more eyes over to H2O since probably last job again. Because I think that's even when I kind of started really noticing you know, H2O was Lash Extravaganza. Yeah. So now we're a year in. We had the story. Now we got new story coming going forward. Um, and I love that with wrestling. And we talked about this with Nick Papa G last night, that H2O has those storylines, which is great, which a lot of promotions don't. Um, and I appreciate the storylines. But let's talk about you with H2O and, you know, everything. Yeah, um, so basically what I got going on right now with them is uh, a nice little partnership for the rest of the year. Um, Snack Season is going to be doing the official, you know, it's going to be H2O, Merry Effing Christmas presented by Snack Season. Um, I'm, I'm really, really thankful for Matt. I think that what me and him are about to do is going to be really cool. Um, I reached out to him 
probably like a month, two months before the Onita show and had asked him if there was any way that, that I could be involved and sell some sauce at the stuff. And ever since then, it's just been him reaching out to me to see what I need, me reaching out to him to get posters. And it's been a really, really good partnership so far. So when he came to me a couple of weeks ago and asked if I would be willing and interested in being the sponsor for the rest of the year, I was 100% down. And I, I'd love to see it grow next year and continue doing that with him. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. Such a special place. That's cute. I got you got your little table set. I love it. If you guys watch the Indie Talks episodes this, this past weekend, you see I, I go bother Steve. Yes. Uh, and then we had Jimmy Loy testing the sauce, which is kind of great. Like, I, I love it. I love it. It's, it's so cool. It's so cool. I love see. that I got my little corner. Matt gives me my little table. And I because I texted him the morning of and I was like, yo, man, like I'm packing my stuff right now. Should I grab my table? And he's like, absolutely not. You know I have one for you. It's just, it's so cool, man. <laughs> it's so, it's so great to see. So, oh, man. <laughs> um, here, let me do with some of these fan tweets. Metal has a couple of, of questions. So the first one nice. was, what was your inspiration to start making the products you sell? So the main inspiration was just because of how much I love hot sauce. Um, me and my friend Tim, the one who's tapes from the crypt, we had been doing like little hot ones challenges at our office. We worked together. And so I had probably like, I don't know, like a hundred bottles of sauce or something at my house just because during the pandemic, that's what I did. I just got different orders from Heat Nest and started trying out different sauces. So once we got back into the office, it was like, yo, why don't we all just start trying these sauces and have some fun with it? And after doing that, after a while, I was like, you know, I kind of want to make one. Like, I feel like I could do this just as well, if not better than some of these people. So it was like, okay, let's do it. Did one. And that's when, like I was saying before, we were trying to think of something to tie with his brand. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of picked up from there. Uh, the first time that we did a sale, we figured if we could sell 15 bottles in a weekend, we were at a, a festival. We thought it would be really cool. We ended up selling 60 bottles in one day. Oh, wow. And that's where we were like, maybe we have something here. That's so cool. Oh, wow. How long does it take to make your sauce? It really depends. You know, from from first conception until bottling, I would say it's probably about two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, because what I like to do is I like to talk to the person I'm making a sauce for first, kind of just kind of gauge what they're into. I want to see what kind of sauces they like, what kind of flavors they like, stuff like that. Then I'll go back to my, my lab and I'll start cooking it up and then I'll send it out to them for a sample to see what they think. You know, with Effie's, for example, I made three different versions that I sent to him so that I could get his feedback. And then I take the feedback and I tweak it. So I, I just keep doing that until I have the perfect recipe and then I go into production. Actually making the sauce, I can usually make about 30 to 60 <coughs> bottles in about two to three hours. Oh, wow. That's nuts. Wow. Process is, uh, is a lot. Uh, John's in the chat. He says hi to you and me. Hi. Uh, let me go to uh, Metal's next question. He goes, do you contact the wrestlers that you name the sauce after or do they contact you? Good question. It's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of both. Um, when I first started doing stuff with the wrestlers, it was all me. Um, it was just me actually at GCW going up to guys at their merch booth and asking if they would be interested in doing this. Um, but now that it's kind of grown a little bit, now I do get people sending me emails and going into my DMs or sending me tweets, which is kind of mind blowing to me. Like, I, I can't believe that these people know who I am, but right. that's that's awesome. And I love it. <laughs> do you have those moments that you're like, oh, my God, this person just yes. messaged me? <laughs> yes. Like, <I> was, <laughs> are you fanboy? I was, actually, I was talking to somebody the other day, one of my friends from, from wrestling down in Delaware. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you a total mark out moment for a second. And he's like, What do you mean? <laughs> and I just sent him the list of my like picture of my DMs, and it's like Matt Cardona, Effie, just like down the line. And he's like, Dude, shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's so crazy. See, we we like fangirl, fanboy a little bit too, like with this <laughs> stuff, and like especially like what you just said. That is like yeah. <laughs> people actually know who you are. It's that's like the cool most, to me. Like that's just so cool to me. Yeah, it's the most wonderful feeling. Even me being a podcaster, I'm like, oh shit, you know who I am? Like, 
oh okay <laughs> like i just sit behind the desk and i chat with right? everybody like, <laughs> i love it i love it everything pro wrestling you're what's up shout out to my friend conrad thanks for coming and joining we're talking sauce um metal's next question is <laughs> if you were in a zombie apocalypse and you could only have one weapon what would it be and why Ooh, fuck i mean i gotta go with the chainsaw you just gotta go chainsaw because if you're gonna say something like like a gun of some sort mm -hmm. you're in a zombie apocalypse nobody's gonna be continuing the refinery work eventually you're gonna run out of bullets but I feel like you're not going to run out of chainsaw gas that quickly. Mm -hmm. There's going to be enough people that are dead that you could probably hit the gas station before everything runs out. You can take your chainsaw. It's very portable. Act at the Cutter Carver's Alley. Get out there and slice some zombies. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like that. That's great. Oh, man. Um <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we <laughs> talked about the whole thing about, you know, wrestlers coming, you know, wanting to work with you. Has there been, and I'm sure there is, because it's never it's never ending. Even as a podcaster, it's never ending. I want to interview everybody. I want to get them on the podcast. Mm -hmm. So who's on your bucket list to make sauce for? Ooh, that's so tough. That is a tough one. Um, I, This is going to sound crazy, but honestly, like, I already hit all three of my big bucket list ones mm -hmm. um when i started thinking about who i wanted i wanted to do one with effie i wanted to do one with dark chic and i wanted to do one with mickey knuckles wow if i was able to do those three i would have been really hyped and now i got them yeah so i have to kind of make a new bucket list <laughs> damn i any, gotta, I gotta any, really think anybody on the thought of the horizon right now since i put you on the spot Mm. I would really like to do one with John Wayne Murdoch. Ooh. I think that it would be really, really fun to do one with him, and we could come up with something really cool. So it ha the bottle has to be made out of plaid, like yellow and blue. <laughs> All right, like if you're gonna yes. do this, it's gotta be like a plaid, and I feel like uh, it has to have like an animal on it. Because it's he's, he's a got rabbit, a zoo. Like right yeah, on the like it's got to have the rabbit because he's got a million animals. <laughs> so that's what you gotta. That's what you gotta do. So, oh man, I'm gonna say him. I'm gonna add another one to my bucket list just because he turned me down before. Uh -huh. But I'm gonna make it happen. It's gonna be Atticus. Atticus, yeah. we're gonna do a sauce one day, whether you like it or not. So start thinking a <laughs> recipe idea. <laughs> That one's got to have suspenders on it, okay? So it's like <laughs> it comes in like a little cozy with suspenders or or it has a skewer on the top yes. or something. Like. <laughs> well, it was funny because I, I went up to him and I asked him the one time. I was actually – I was hanging out with Kid Osborne. He was borrowing my charger while I was waiting for Effie. And I'm like, yo, Atticus, like, so what's up? When we doing a sauce, what you want? He just looks at me and goes, I don't use hot sauce. He just walks away. I'm like, no, okay. <laughs> He doesn't have to use it. You know? <laughs> like, I'm not a hot sauce person. Like, I can't. Like, my stomach will be, like, ripped into, like, a million pieces. So, you know. But I, lo I love the fact that, you know, you're doing something different. You're doing something special and how it, like, took off. I mean, I'm very close. Everybody knows about Casey and Brandon. Um, so yes. now you have the Kirk sauce. I mean, for the fans that. That, that, you know, aren't aware of your sauce, can you give, like, a little bit of a rundown of, like, a couple of the sauce of the independent wrestlers that you're working for? Yeah, for sure. So we've done some with GCW itself. I did the GCW official sauce. Uh, Effie, Jimmy Lloyd, the Kirks, or Invite, the Carver Cutters Alley, um, Matt Cardona, Coming up here, we got Zicky Dice. I got Tyler Breeze. I got the two-time Queen of the Death match, uh, Rebecca Payne. So there's been a there's been a bunch. Bam Sullivan, the Kirks. Yeah, it's it's really cool. It's it's cool to see a little setup. Like like I said, Jimmy Lloyd was in the background tasting, and you were saying that the Or Invite ones like coming soon, right? That was yes. like the the new one. So that's pretty yeah. The cool. uh, the Or Invite actually that it's coming back because of how quick it sold out. Yeah. Oh man, it's it's impressive. Like, thank you guys, by the way. Like, seriously, that we broke Etsy when I was at IWA Mid South. Wow. Um, that was the day that the Carver, the Kirks, and Orange dropped was November fifth, and Etsy actually shut down my payments because of how much, how fast people were buying. Oh wow. They thought that it was a spam. 
Oh, wow. That's so cool, though. Yeah. That's such, like, a, a moment, too, for you that it's like, damn, like, this is yeah. working. You know, people are buying my sauce. Like, man. It was so cool. And especially the fact that I was, like, with Oren when it happened. Yeah. I was able to run and tell him. Like, that was that was so cool. Aw. I love it. I love it. Uh, everything pro wrestling. He says ranch or blue cheese. Ranch. <laughs> ranch, ranch, ranch. Then, okay, here's something for you. So Tyler Breeze and me were going through ideas for his sauce. And the first thing that he says to me is, I want a blue cheese buffalo. I had to put a kibosh on that because there is no shot of a blue cheese sauce coming out of my kitchen because that means I would have to taste it first. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Oh, but do you make the recommendations too? Like, okay, like the orange bite tastes good on this or like. Yes, yes. So, okay. I love to do that. That's one of my favorite things is when people hit me up and ask, what should I try it on? I love to get those recommendations. I'm like, I'm a sauce sommelier, baby. I can break <laughs> it down for you. What you need. <laughs> Uh, Fury says, oh, good Lord. No, I don't like hot sauce. I like frozen sauce. Oops, mild sauce that I can bear while eating food. <laughs> so well, do then you... you need that Ricky Shane Page sauce because that's, <laughs> that's mild as it gets. So I'm sure, obviously, like each person, there's like that different, right? You have your mild, you have like your super spicy, like. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, like you said, it really depends on the wrestler, right? Like their choice. It does. The, the only one who really didn't have a choice with what he was getting was Jimmy Lloyd. Because the name of the sauce is you're fucking with a different soy. And I thought that was just too perfect that I was like, listen, this is what you're getting, whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun, though. That is that's definitely fun. I love but that. like, uh, for example, with what you were saying, though, like it was just funny to go between Effie where I go over to him. I'm like, so what are you thinking? What do you like? He's like, I want it as hot as you can make it, baby, Aww. just like me. <laughs> and then I go over to Ricky. And I'm like, so, Ricky, what do you want? And he's like my old no fruit <laughs> i love it it's interesting though i think i think that's so great though i do i really really <laughs> do that's so fun um so again you know you made like h2o one of your homes you made gcw one of your homes which is great too you yes. made a sauce that's generally just for gcw which is great i'm waiting mm -hmm. for you to put out the h2o one you know oh like, it's coming I'm don't, sure. don't you fret it's oh coming. i'm sure it's coming there it. you go um, so, you know, we talk about these two promotions, like, you, you know, what has been like some of your favorite matches this year? Ooh, that's such a tough one. Yeah, there's a lot. All right. So let's, let's just go through the list. I'll start with, uh, with GCW would probably be, da -da -da -da. all right. So obviously the tournament is survival match between Cologne and Atticus. We already talked about that one. Um, I think from that same show, Warren Vite and, uh, Nolan Edward had a really, really great match. Um, probably one of my top of the year. Um, I loved Cardona versus Gage. That was so much fun to be at live. That whole, like the whole build to it, the the entrances, the throwing stuff at the end. I thought that was awesome. Um, obviously, we already said the Lucky Thirteen Atticus from H two O. I thought the casket match with uh, Ricky Shane Page. Where Eddie only popped out at yeah. the end between <laughs> Raver. I thought that was awesome. Um, those those are up there. What else? I'm gonna I'm gonna go IWA Mid South actually from from a couple weeks ago when I was out there. Or invite and John Wayne Murdoch had an amazing match. Um, Eric Ryan versus John Wayne Murdoch, uh, the Iron Man match from ICW. I think all of those are easy match of the years. Yeah, there's a lot of great ones this year. I know I'm supposed to do a podcast with somebody. They're like, we want to talk about all the ones of like this year that pops. I'm like, oh god, I was like, it was, it's so hard. It's been a there's hot so year. So much good wrestling this yeah. year. And that's that's the nice thing too. Like, again, we're gonna go back to that. That you know, the indie scene's so hot. This is a good time, and I feel like, and I keep hearing like it's just the beginning. That between like February and March, that it's gonna blow up even more. Now I don't know what that yeah. means. You know, that's what certain people are saying to me. Uh, but it's hot now. Like, it's it's insane. <laughs> like, There's never been a better time, honestly. Yeah. Like, like, everything is so good. Everything's aligning. Like, you have IWTV to get the eyes on it. You have just all these people now who are realizing they don't need the WWE model who are now coming back into it. And it's it's an exciting time. You have all those people who are lapsed wrestling fans 
who kind of got out of it after ECW and CZW all kind of went to the wayside. Yeah. And now, now it's like, wait, there's GCW, there's H2O, there's ICW, there's all of these options now. It's yeah. the best time to yeah. be a fan. Oh, it's so good. And it's true. And just like, that's like one of the things on social media we're always seeing. People are always fighting. And it's like, I don't even understand. You know, like, again, like even like me, I put out a post the other day and I was like, you know, people come at me and they talk, they, they, they asked me to be on their WWE podcast. Where in the world do I ever talk about WWE? And <laughs> that's fine. Like, again, like, it's just not for me. And if that's what you're into, great. You know, like, enjoy it. You know, like, I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to pick a fight with you. Great. I'm glad you found something that you enjoy. Me, you know, I, that ship sailed for me or whatever. I'm having more for, fun an indie scene right now you know so you know like with all like you said with all this stuff that's out there if there's things you don't like there's so much wrestling and it's like impossible to it's keep true. up with I mean, if if I, I tweeted this a couple weeks ago if you can't find something that you mm -hmm. like right now wrestling isn't the problem you are yeah no you're right you're right it's it's nuts and it's like it's not just like wherever you live you know, like right. I, here I am. I live in New York and most of the time I'm traveling to New Jersey. New Year's, I'm actually traveling up to Massachusetts because I've been on my bucket list has been beyond wrestling, limitless. Nice. Like, you know, H2O is going to be up there. Action's going to yep. be up there. Blitzer's going to be up there. Like Pizza Party Pro, like it's it's nuts. Like I'm going to hit it's a so whole bunch cool. of promotions that I've never been to live that I've been dying to see live. And I haven't because awesome. I live here. Right, yeah. That's awesome that there's out-of-state promotions that are getting that from you. Yeah. The fact that, that these people can put something out on Twitter from the middle of nowhere, Massachusetts, and get somebody from New York to be like, hell yeah, I'm going to spend my New Year's up there. Yeah. Yeah, like that's so cool. It is cool. I know, like when I had put that post out that I when I bought the tickets for that, and then it was the rest of the like they they retweeted it. And they were like, oh, you know, we're so excited to, like, have you come and check us out. Finally. I was like, this has been a bucket list for me to come, like, to Beyond Wrestling, go to the White Eagle. You know, like, that's that says mm -hmm. a lot. You know, I want to go to, you know, I'm so sad. I wish I could go see Billy Stark Sunday for her birthday with her show. Yeah. And I wish this was live. I was like, Billy, please tell me this is live. She goes, no, but it'll <laughs> probably be somewhere. I'm like, no. Like, <laughs> like, come read, you know, Myron Reed versus Marcus Matters. Like, fuck. That's amazing. Holy That's amazing. Billy Starks versus Effie. What the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> Effie's going to kill that child. <laughs> uh -oh. Don't clip this and tag her. Don't, don't clip. I know, right? <laughs> don't, don't clip this and tag her. What do you her. mean? Effie already heard that I said it and he's clipping it at, clipping it as we speak. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love Effie. He's so he's, he's the so best. Great. Honestly, he's he's awesome. He's so great. So and, that, and that's the fun thing too. And like I always tell the fans, you know, go meet your favorite wrestlers. You know, like go talk to them. And I'm sure you can sit there too, and say that to the fans. We have we have fans that are scared. Again, I'm the one. I will throw people under the bus because it was done to me. So now I pass mm -hmm. it on to the other fans that are scared to meet the wrestlers. I love that. Like that's that's just so cool to me that people actually like they they get so worked up about an independent wrestler. Like that's so cool. You're doing your job right. Yeah, you are. You are. We were just talking. And, I'm sorry, Simone. I'm gonna throw you on the bus on this podcast. <laughs> I was just telling Steve off air how uh, you know this past weekend I was sitting with her and Jewel. And she was like, I've never met Ricky Shane Page. And I'm like, really? And she's like, yeah. I was like, well, he's right there because he was selling merch right in front of us. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, let's go say hi. And then she's like, no. And I'm like, what do you mean no? And she's like, I'm scared. And I'm like, what are you scared of? I was like, he's like the most nicest guy. I was like, no. So I was like, Ricky, she's so afraid to meet you. <laughs> Fun smack, not like like meat smack, like plate smack or whatever, just so anybody knows. And right, right. I love how I think he was talking to like the Bev, and then within like a minute later, he comes over and he shakes her hand. I was like, this is what I'm saying. You don't get this mainstream, you know? No, you don't. You, you, you don't get this don't. mainstream. And the wrestlers, you know, they'll remember you, right? Like, I mean, you like you said, you've wrestled, you know, and you've had those. You've had that fan reaction. 
Uh, and I'm sure too, like you remember your fans, right? Like, of course, of course I do. It's the, that's, if I didn't remember them, I wouldn't have gotten that giant head made of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's, there's something really special about having that relationship with the fans and, you know, putting people, putting people at ease and letting them know that like, I'm a person too. Yeah. Like, let's have this conversation. Like, I, I love that. Yeah. And especially like the, like Sky, for example. Yeah. I love how much people are supporting her with her training right oh now my online. God. Yes. I think that's so awesome. Oh. Like, things yeah. like that are really, really cool. And you're only going to get that from the Indies. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love that. Oh, man. And, it, and it's so great. We've had Sky on. I had her on the Wrestling with Positivity episode. She told, like, her story, which was which was so nice. Um, and, you know, yes. we'll actually jump into that with you as well. Um, but I'd love to have Sky on here again, too, eventually. Like, we could talk about her experiences with um, training and you know i guess i think she's been training seven weeks now eight weeks yep, now that's what but, like, saw, but like you, like that. yeah like but you even said that even the wrestlers like giving her advice like i tagged anthony gangone the other day because she was looking for promo advice and then i also mm -hmm. told her make sure you talk to tremont you know and even like anthony gangone gave some great advice um bam sullivan's like another one like we said is like so amazing to her it, it's it's we're a community you know and you know we're a family and you know, it's, it's wonderful to see these these moments. So with that being said, with wrestling and positivity. So like I had said that I was going to bring this back into a lot of my interviews because as a podcaster, able to go backstage, working with you guys, working with wrestlers, working with promoters, I see things that fans don't see. Right. And I feel like with all the negativity that's out there, we need to push out the positive. And with me having this platform right here, you know, uh, you know, has there been any moments for you, you know, that has happened maybe with you with a fan, maybe something backstage, maybe something with another wrestler that, you know, brings like positivity into wrestling that nobody's seen before? Hmm. It's a really good question, actually. Yeah. Um, I think the thing that, that really stands out to me, the one thing that I really appreciate as a wrestler that I see um, is when you're in the locker room and they do have a setup where there there is a camera with a monitor in the back. Anybody who will actually take the time to sit there, watch the show, and then offer feedback after somebody comes through the curtain, I think that's really, really cool to me. And that's something that a lot of fans obviously wouldn't know happens. Yeah. Um, I love when somebody will actually take the time you know, because when you're when you're at a show and you're getting ready, you know, you're lacing your boots, you're putting on your singlet, you're going through everything to, to actually spend 10 minutes for somebody else to watch what they do, pay attention to what they do, and then not just say, oh, that was great, but to actually give them the feedback. Like, that's really positive and it's really helping people grow. Um, when I started, there wasn't a lot of that. You know, there was a lot more bullying in the locker room when I started. Mm -hmm. And it's very different now than it was back then. So I think just the entire positivity of wrestling in general from a backstage perspective is amazing right now compared to 2006, 2007. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've seen that too. Or I've heard like the students tell me um, like some of the feedback that goes on backstage because a lot of times I'm not I'm, I'm not backstage normally during the shows I'm backstage before and after um so I and sometimes I go back there I'll get like some post interviews or, or whatever but you know that that's such a great thing especially for that younger talent too I feel like when you get like a vet giving that feedback trying to help exactly involve you exactly which is you know wonderful there's there's too many people who when I first started, they were just concerned about their spot and protecting their spot. Yeah. And especially with the older guys who didn't want to see the new guys that were coming in succeed because they thought it was going to take away from them. And to know that now that's not as prevalent as it was, at least in my area, mm -hmm. is really, really cool. Well, yeah, it's 
really, really great. Uh, let me get some other of these fan tweets uh, before we close out. Uh, Good Cop, Bad Cop says, with Gritty featuring on the promo picture for this interview and Steve Coleman being an anagram of Mascot 11, which are your <laughs> top 11 mascots? Actually, for time, let's do the top three. <laughs> 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 All right, we can do that. That's fine with me. <laughs> so, hmm, number three, I'm going to go with Zippy, which is the Akron Zips mascot. He is a giant kangaroo. I am a very big fan of Zippy. Very, very, uh, very cuddly. Very cuddly, and that's what I like about Zip. Number two... Let's go with the Nittany Lion from Penn State. You know, this is a classic mascot. This is one that you're going to see doing push-ups at the sideline and doing backflips in the end zone. Loves me some knit. But number one is obviously my cousin, my brother from another mother, the one that they found in the basement of the well grit nasty <laughs> i love it i love it uh we have another fan too well he gave two but one of them you already answered so we're, i'm not gonna read that question uh so he says who is the one who is the one wrestling you want a dream match with so one wrestler mm. yeah Ooh. <sighs> hmm i would like to have hmm all right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go out of the box here a little bit because I don't want just one. I'm gonna go with I want Project Mayhem, which was my old stable. Mm -hmm. That's me, Matt Wild, Ryan Vox, uh, Rex Savage, Corey Cross, to go up against Four Four O, and a full on straight up War Games battle elimination shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I love it. I love it. Uh, good but I refuse to be the face. Uh, it's just going to be a heel versus heel match because fuck Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Good cop, bad cop says, I have been waiting for this answer for days and I have met Zippy. And then he's, he's writing gritty, gritty, gritty in the chat. So you made his day. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, all right. So, you know, we'll get back into like some of the pictures. We'll go into all that stuff after. If you guys have any other questions, drop them into the chat. But my final question for you on this podcast today is, so what's your end goal? Like, you know, where do you see yourself in the next couple of years? Or, you know, what, if it, that's too far fetched, where do you see yourself in the next year? Okay. So the ultimate goal, obviously, is to is to just be in stores. That's what I really, really want. I want to be, you know, I want people to go into the grocery store and be able to get Frank's Red Hot, Tabasco, or snack season. That's that's my number one goal. Like, if I could be in every store and be that name brand that people know and love, that would be awesome for me. Um, for the next year, I think that my big goal is probably to get onto Hot Ones. Um, I've already been into contact with them to see how to go about it. And I've put in the plans that I needed to get accepted. Mm -hmm. So now that I have all of that, I think that that's my goal for this year. I just really want to get at least one of our sauces onto hot ones. Awesome. Tweet at them, guys. Let's get it out there. Yes, <laughs> tell, them them it's your, know. tell them it's your favorite sauce and that he needs to be out there. Do it. Do it now. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, you know, I have some pictures up here that you had sent me. It's so awesome. Kevin Gill, man. Like, that's awesome. I love, I love, like, you know, when you're, like, introducing, like, the new, the new names, the new sauces, you know, whatever's <laughs> cooking up and stuff like that. Um, but tell everybody, like, you know, you know, if they obviously they can't get to, like, one of the shows that you're at, like, tell them where they could find you, where they could find your your sauce did they pre-order yeah. stuff or you know any yeah, info yeah, yeah. on that so uh if you want to get in touch with me on twitter it's at rich steve on instagram it's rich steve 17 or snack season sauces on instagram um on there or on my twitter profile right in the uh link in the bio it'll take you to our big cartel um i'm not going to go through the entire name of the big cartel because it's probably gonna get lost in translation <laughs> but it's tapes from the crypt snack season sauces da, 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 da. so just look for the link in my bio it's so much easier <laughs> um 
but yeah, go, go, go to Rich Steve 17, Snack Season Sauces, or at Rich Steve, and just send me a message. I got you. Awesome. Awesome. And if any wrestlers or anybody wants to work with you, I'm sure they can hit you up as well, right? Oh, yeah. Just just shoot me the DM. The DMs are always open for that reason. Awesome. <laughs> so tell everybody where you're going to be at the next couple of weeks if they want to buy yes. uh, a sauce. Yes. So uh, December 17th and 18th, I will be at H2O at Snack Season Presents H2O Merry F and Christmas. On New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, I will be at GCW at the Showboat in Atlantic City. January 15th, I will be in Columbus, Ohio at Unsanctioned Pro for Royal Flush. Um, then in March, I'm actually going to be out in uh, Tennessee for the New Jack, uh, New Jack Tribute Show in Knoxville. And then in May, I will be back in uh, Indianapolis for um, Southern Sickness Cup with Pro Wrestling Train Rock. Nice. Nice. Oh, that's cool. You're going to be at Unsanctioned Pro, too. I love Derek. Yep. He's so great. We are actually the sponsors of the Cole Radrick Calvin Tech yes. match. Or uh, not Calvin Tech, the Brian Keith match. So, that's so awesome. check that out. So, and I love it like when people bring up names, and a lot of these names you guys have seen on this podcast. Derek's been on here, Cole Radrick's been on here, a bunch of the H2O kids have been on here, Matt Tremont's been on here. Like, yes. the list never. And so, you know, with that being said, <laughs> Steve, I can't thank you enough for hanging out with me, talking some sauce. We got a little saucy today. So, like, <laughs> that New thank York. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So, and then we'll definitely, you guys will see him backstage at, you know, I will be there on the 17th and 18th over at H2O. So, I'll be backstage. I'm sure I'll get him. Maybe you'll have a new sauce by then out or whatever. So, oh. Oh, definitely. Well, uh, by the time that you see me next, I will have the Grey Wolf extra hot. I will have the Rebecca Payne Nashville hot, which comes with a piece of her shirt from the Queen of the Death match this Ooh. year. And uh, do you want some exclusive news? Should Ooh. I give you an exclusive? Let's drop the exclusives here on the Indie Wrestling Corner. So if you do come out to GCW on uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, you are going to be able to pick up and this has not been announced anywhere, the Bussy Combo Pack. There will be an Alley Catch sauce, and there will be a revamped version of Effie's Wrath that will both be available at GCW. Oh, exciting. If you guys got somewhere to go, this is the place to go. Go to GCW Atlantic City. It's always fun staying at the show boat. See some of your favorite wrestlers. Man, they got a lot of people coming up drew parker oh i'm sad that i'm not gonna see him but it's okay i'll be up in massachusetts but i will also vow i wish i could split myself in two so i could be at gcw as well uh this is the problem that i have but this is why the queen of the indies i'm all over the place i'll catch up with everything so yes but anyway uh guys thank you so much for hanging out with us make sure you hit that like button make sure you're subscribed turn that bell on to see any upcoming shows love dogs coming on next week the rep is coming on next week if there's certain people you guys want me to interview on this podcast let me know or tag them and tell them you want them to be on my podcast so i'm working very hard i think january i'm going to bring back a bunch of people that's in the works for me bring back old friends of the podcast so uh yeah so that's gonna wrap it up guys thank you so much for hanging out uh stay safe Support independent wrestling, and you guys have a good night. Bye.